All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome in as we take a look at another game that has caught our attention. And this time, I'd actually like to say a big thank you to Jay for pointing out that this game even has a trailer. I have been following along for quite a while with the developers, knew someone was going on in the background, but it completely slipped my radar that they actually brought this out, particularly as I do remember watching the Game Awards, although I had had quite a few. So what game is in question? Well, of course, we are talking about Judas, the brand new game coming out by the developers of Bioshock. Now, we have been playing through the trilogy over here, and quite frankly, this seems like a great excuse. I may have to go ahead and just start Infinite. I had other plans, we we're going to do other stuff. I feel like I owe it to myself to play that through just before this one comes out. And for anyone who hasn't tried it out, I would recommend it because you can pick up the collection 1, 2, and 3 plus all the DLC for pretty cheap these days, especially with sales going on over on Steam. Bioshock 1 reinvented console action first person shooter RPGs. It's a very long set of genres. Then number two, despite a lot of the reviews, was actually pretty darn good. Not to mention bringing in those DLCs, it comes with Minerva's Den, which, which was so much better than it had any right to be. But I've got some pretty high hopes for this, in particular looking at the story, world building, lore surrounding it, as that is really where the Bioshock series shine. But before we begin, Future Bear is here to say, don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and all that YouTube-y goodness. Because I did. The ship is dying. And my only way out of here is with one of them. Oh, the opening image is... We've got melee weapons, which was a hammer this time. Awesome. And there's always something on the hand. And the left hand at that. Is that a thing against left hands? Wait a sec. Go on, I'm gonna flick this back to back to that start, but I got some weird stuff in the background there. I was looking down here. We've got oh god, I'm like directly in front of it, aren't I? Give me a sec. There we go. Solutions. <laughs> Just down here in that corner. Got like some, it's like animatronic, like mascot or something. And this thing's in because later on we had like behind the dude as well. Some weird like horse, donkey, cowboy. <laughs> I swear to God, Crazy as a bar show. I just brilliant at taking all these random ideas and mixing them in. And they do it well. So it looks weird. It looks funky. Good to see the artwork back. Oh, we got General Fluffers. Excellent. Go on, let's take a pause right there. One of the main things I've always loved in the Bioshock series, their artwork, their background artwork is fantastic. It gives you everything you need, everything you need to see to build a world, to let you actually feel like people lived there, things happen, things actually going on, you know? Without going completely over the top and more importantly, without kind of throwing your face in it. It was there if you wanted to see it, it was there if you looked, but it didn't completely consume you. You could still run past it and they didn't mind that. That was your choice. But for those who looked, for those who really delved into it, it was something else. So we got some kind of dog transport ship vehicle thing, which to be honest, sounds absolutely amazing. If a little bit sickening i mean i'm not gonna deny it. if i'm in a car and someone's driving erratically i'm getting car sick imagine you're inside a dog being thrown around as it jumps there are not enough bags in the world we also get to see what's going on with the hand and this i can't decide you can definitely see the future tech coming in but it kind of looks like clockwork to me it's some kind of weird not exactly steampunk and i had steampunk before i've had enough of that stuff we're going clockwork punk suppose we should gather the boys for some ultra violence Hopefully not any of the old in and out. And in grand Bioshock fashion, we got tattoos, we got markings, although I do kind of adore this. I always kind of wanted that tattoo. I don't really think I have enough space. I guess we're going outside. People say I have this coming. 
And you know what? They're right. Fix what you broke. Ended with a mighty hammer. Don't mind if we do. Just before we move on to the inevitable look at all the other information surrounding this, because let's face facts, my reactions aren't really reactions. It's more just a compilation of stuff and watching a video. Huzzah. Before we get to that, this looks awesome. I love the idea of like the just stick it together however you can type of weaponry. That whole DIY, in this case, a lovely little crossbow slash I kind of want to say harpoon. Don't ask me why, because bike chains would be a terrible thing to take underwater. Now I kind of want to try. I'm going to be honest, actually not seeing that much in the way of gunplay or gun variety, or really anything to do with combat doesn't particularly bother me because I'm going to be honest, the first Bioshock wasn't the best in terms of gunplay, at least in terms of that action. Felt a little sloppy, felt a little strange. Number two tied it up quite a bit and from what I've seen of number three, it looks like they kind of hit the nail on the head finally with that one. But you don't play it for the guns, you don't play it for the combat, really you're playing it for the story and everything that builds up to it. Not to mention messing around with plasmids, that's just good fun. And seeing as they've got their own clockwork versions, I'm sure we're going to have something to enjoy in there. I think the reason why I'm so looking forward to this, and the reason why I'm really spending that time to look at the environment and the world that they're depicting for it, is that this comes from Ken Levine. For those who don't know, Ken Levine was on the team way back in System Shock 2, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite, so he's definitely got the pedigree and the know-how to bring all this together. However, he originally left the team from Bioshock, saying that he wanted to work on something a little different, a little grander, and and also significantly harder to do when you're doing so with a huge team. Now as a creative director, he's definitely a little bit out there and more than willing to completely scrap and redo entire sections of games pretty much on the spot, fine tuning and tweaking things until everything comes together just right. And more importantly, in following with his vision, a vision he wants to accomplish, whereas every player will have their own personalized experience within a game. Something that's easy enough to do if you're gonna throw in a sandbox, but something that's significantly harder when you're trying to put in more of a narrative focus. Now, it would definitely be remiss of me not to point out right now that Ghost Story, the team behind this, has been a little... You know, I really don't know a nice way to say that. They've gone through hell, with the game having been worked on from all the way back in 2017, with a small team at Ghost Division going through multiple reboots as they aim to finish it. But even with that 2017 mark being a later date to when Ken Levine allegedly started all the way back in 2014. And the fact that we finally have something to go by, a solid trailer to look at, at least in terms of a teaser or a revealer trailer, definitely suggests that we are getting somewhere. The team has pulled together and managed to produce something that, well, I'm going to be absolutely honest, I genuinely look forward to because, or well, to put it simple, Ken Levine hasn't let me down yet. Dude, Ken Levine is awesome. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments. Until next time, as always, Peace out. Radio, constable. I'm just gonna steal this right in front of you. Finest on the force.